A group of anti-Antifa anti-fascists clashed with a group of Antifa fascists in Boston. The anti-Antifa anti-fascists were protesting the fascistic policy of vaccine mandates, and the Antifa fascists showed up to actually fight with the anti-Antifa anti-fascists. Okay, let me just let me just stop the bit for a second. This one's actually kind of funny, though, because everything I said was just true. All right. You have a group of conservative types, libertarian types, protesting fascism. And a group calling themselves anti-fascist shows up and gets into a fight with those actually opposing fascism. To help you understand this, I will break it down further. Anti-mandate protesters in Boston said no mandates. And Antifa, which is short for anti-fascist, said yes, government mandates. These people are a cult. This is this is the, the plainest example of what this is. Now, I think it's fair to point out that the anti extremists don't represent the majority of the establishment left. However, the establishment media often runs defense for them. You won't see the same thing with conservatives. When a group of QAnon people come out, right wing individuals rag on them and make fun of them. When Antifa shows up and acts a fool and engages in violence and overt fascistic behavior, the media covers it up, won't report on it, or actually defends it. And they've done it several times. I'd like to show you a meme to help help you understand exactly what the problem is right now. This is a meme where a man slowly gets dressed up like a clown. And it says, I'm an anti-fascist that supports big pharma corporations teaming up with the federal government to finance and distribute a product that is mandatory by law. You know what the funny thing about this, this meme is? I got this response from some guy. It ain't a mandate if you can opt out with testing. Where in the, uh, the meme does it say anything about vaccines? It doesn't. The post itself is about vaccines and testing and masks. It is about anything in which the government and private corporations merge to fund and distribute a mandatory product by law. It's called fascism. At least in some regard, it's Mussolini's fascism. So when Antifa shows up and says, get the Capitol writers out of Boston, and it's like, dude, you guys are the fascists. It's you. It's the weirdest thing to me. That like I can literally make every single video be like, I think war is bad. Big pharma is bad. Major corporations are bad. Government authority is overreaching. And then the left is like, yeah, well, he's a fascist. I don't think they know what fascist means. Now, there's the more colloquial colloquial modern definition, which is ultra nationalistic uh, traditionalism or ultra-traditionalist nationalism, of which I fall into neither category, or it is the more classical Mussolini's fascism, the lucrative merger of corporation and state for the betterment of the nation. In which case, these people are fascists. They talk about like, they, they say, we, what, we can't come together in a time of need. It's patriotic to, to mandate, blah, blah, blah. They say, there's always been vaccine mandates. Wrong, there haven't. Back in 1905, the Supreme Court ruled that you could be fined $5 in the event there was a pandemic and you didn't want to get vaccinated. A $5 fine back then was equivalent to about $150 now. Nowhere did they say, papers please, and that was deemed okay. And not only that, the Supreme Court ruling paved the way for forced sterilization of women deemed to be less adequate in the cognitive faculties region. OK, so no, it was never a good ruling. People called it out. And in the end, all it really was was get a vaccine or you get a fine. So technically, yes, there was a mandate, but it was never like you can't go to a restaurant. You can't go to a school or anything like that. Not to mention when they talk about vaccine mandates in schools, there are religious and medical exemptions and public school is optional. How about that? Well, here's a story from the Daily Mail. They say a right wing group's protest against COVID-19 mask and vaccine mandates turned into a nasty feud with Antifa counter demonstrators whose rallying cry was to tell the Capitol rioters to get out of Boston. These people are a cult. They, they have no cognitive, un- they, they have no understanding of what's going on in the world. They believe CNN. And this is the thing, right? I can tell you that the QAnon people are out, are, are out of it. 
completely insane. I don't know what was going on. Apparently, there was some story where they all showed up to like the grassy knoll waiting for JFK Jr. to emerge from the dead or something. I don't believe the media when they make those claims, but a bunch of people were standing around, you know, near the whatever that street is. Uh, The point is, yeah, we can criticize them. No problem. But these people aren't following Fox News. They're not following right wing news sources, National Review or Breitbart. They're following weird Internet forums. These people, these Antifa types are following CNN. They're believing CNN's constant lies about what happened on January 6th. They have no idea what's really going on in the world. Same as the Q people. The problem, CNN, institutional power, pushing insane lies. Look at Russiagate. I mean, at a certain point, wouldn't you be like, hey, we were wrong literally every time. And that is a good reason why the Democrat activist types should be outright rejecting these lies. Apparently, they just can't because it's more about tribalism. They say the high nude COVID protest at Boston Commons on Sunday was organized by a group called Super Happy Fun America, which describe it, describes itself as a right of center civil rights organization focusing on defending the Constitution opposing gender madness and defeating cultural Marxism. However, anti-fascist demonstrators, no, 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 that that included green monster Antifa. No, you can't call them anti-fascist because they're pro-fascist. It's like a bank robber says, we're we're a bank robbing group called the anti-bank robbers. But you're robbing a bank. Oh, but we're the anti-bank robbers. And what the media is going to be like, okay. Yeah, that's apparently how it works. A play on the famous left field wall at Fenway Park and Solidarity Against Hate Boston announced on Twitter they would be showing up to the event in order to tell the Capitol rioters to get out of Boston. The resulting clash forced police officers dressed in riot gear to break up the confrontations between the two warring protest groups. So you have anti-Antifa anti-fascists and Antifa fascists are the two groups that were fighting. There you go. Let's go, Brandon. There you go. They say, uh, so here's Green Monster Antifa with three baseball bats for their strike through. If you'd like to tell this whole load of violently misogynistic fail sons to get the hell out of town, BOS Solidarity is leading the counter protest. A bunch of fascists mask up against hate. This is the funniest thing is that these people have no idea what they're protesting. So we got, you know, a fight broke out between the groups. This is from NBC Boston. They say, Photos showed at least one protester getting pepper sprayed in the face while others tussled, and at least one person was seen receiving medical attention from police while lying on the ground. Two people were arrested during the confrontations, cops said. The official police reports haven't been filed, but a spokesperson for the Boston PD told DailyMail.com they would likely be charged with disorderly conduct. Several protesters were holding flags that said death to fascism, as well as flags displaying the hammer and sickle. Oh. They're just communists. Okay. Another video from a local news reporter shows Antifa uh, members yelling Nazis out to people inside of a U-Haul van trying to leave the event. The Antifa members attempted to troll speakers and demonstrators by blaring loud music and playing instruments. The right wing group gained notoriety in 2019 for holding a straight pride event that drew hundreds of counter demonstrators that blasted the members as being homophobic extremists. Sunday's Rise Against Tyranny March was able to speak out against federal vaccination, was to speak out against federal vaccination and mask mandates during the COVID-19 pandemic. My body, my choice, no mandates. Apparently, the irony is not lost on the fringe leftist cult members. No vax passport, stop tyranny. We can see an officer there holding a baton. And I believe for the most part, that's the gist of the story. Well, uh, well exemplified in the meme of... Anti-fascists supporting the federal government mandating public funding go to Big Pharma to mandate a product. You know what I love is that the left screams all day and night about people like Martin Shkreli. And now they're demanding the government take our tax dollars and give it to these Big Pharma executives who can pad their pockets. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, I've always been anti-corporate and anti-establishment politics, yet here we are. I don't know who on the right is pro-big corporation right now, for the most part. I mean, you do have the, uh, the, the rather annoying libertarian types who are like, Facebook should be allowed to do whatever it wants. And you're like, they're literally erasing your ideology and authoritarians are using their platform to gain power. And the left agrees and the libertarians are just like, but they're allowed to do whatever they want. No, 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 no. I believe in regulation. There's got to be a balance. I will say 
The problem with communism, government authoritarianism, is that it whatever policy, whatever whatever ideology makes its way to the top or becomes dominant, fascism, communism, whatever, you instantly have a small group of centralized uh, individual of, of individuals with centralized power, and they wield that to cause harm to other people. The problem I see with capitalism is that power coalesces, and over a long enough period of time, you end up with massive monopolies that are just impossible to deal with. So you can have all of the oil owned by one company. You can have all of the banks owned by a small handful of companies, all of the media owned by a small handful of, uh, of, of individuals, and it's bad. It causes very serious problems. So what happens when you take the power of the federal government and massive multinational corporations and put them together into what is known as classically Mussolini's fascism? Well, that is the worst possible outcome out of all of this. Communism's bad, definitely. They do really bad things. And massive, unchecked, unfettered capitalism is also bad. And I get a lot of the libertarian types who genuinely believe that if you have a totally free market, like a legitimately free market, this would never happen. And that's just not true because there's, ne- there's there's questions they can never answer about like what happens if somebody starts taking a dump upstream, you know, from where my water comes from. And there's no real good answer. You know, I've talked to objectivists and libertarians and ANCAPs and they're like, well, somebody would just claim ownership of the water. And then eventually someone's going to be like, I need water to live and they'll take it by force. But you can't do that. That's got any. No, listen. That just total like free market doesn't necessarily work. I definitely lean towards free market, but I do think there needs to be a public commons and public agreement on certain rules about what we can or cannot do in certain things. So that means like, hey, we all agree, like by all means, you know, you can sell water from the stream. Just don't poop in it. Right. I mean, look at San Francisco. This is the perfect example of the worst of, ever, of all worlds. You've got corporate oligarchy with government fascistic action from the state. And then there's literally poop in the streets and the ultra wealthy live atop their ivory towers. Yeah, we don't want any of that. That's all bad. That's all bad. So I think we need a strong free market. And we also need an equally powerful regulatory uh, capability. So um, I don't know, rather centrist as it were. Now, as for taxes, it's an entirely different thing. I mean, if you want to argue there shouldn't be any taxes, we can. We just need a public agreement on things that we don't do. And what, what, what I think people who are like ANCAP libertarian need to understand is that when you have a homogenous culture where we all agree don't poop in the water, well, then you don't need the regulation because people have scruples. But what happens when you have a massive sprawling civilization and different cultures in different cities and some people just don't care? You take a look at Chicago. You get all these cities around Lake Michigan dumping their sewage and waste from their, you know, the beer, man, the beer plants into the water and it flows down to Chicago and then everybody on the beach gets sick. So there's got to be something to be like, we agree on a certain set of rules. That's regulation. That's where government can do a good job. Where government does a bad job is when they create social programs that can never end and get funded indefinitely. That's a problem. Well, my friends, I bring you now to the strict mandate of Los Angeles. Where's, a, where's Antifa to say the government shouldn't be mandating people have no access to public accommodation? I thought the public was supposed to be for the public. You see, the reality is the Antifa types are actually just communists for the most part. It's the Mott and Bailey. They'll say, we just oppose fascism. And then you're like, but Antifa is a reference to the Communist Party of Weimar Germany. And they're like, no, no, no. And then yes, yes, actually, yes. What would happen if Antifa gained power is you would get fascism faster than you could realize. That's the funny thing about it. They're not ultra, they're not ultra traditionalists. They're not necessarily ultra nationalist, but they are ultra authoritarian and they do support corporate and government merger for the betterment, uh, for the advancement of their ideology. Over in Los Angeles, reporting today, strict mandate takes effect in LA. Business patrons must show proof of vaccination. Yoga studio owner David Gross felt relieved after L.A. passed a vaccine mandate that is among the strictest in the country. Well, that's because David Gross is a fascist, okay? Because vaccines are manufactured by private corporations, and your money is given to them to fund the vaccine, and then the government mandates you get it. 
That's fascism. What's that? You're going to now talk about auto insurance? Who Who's disagreeing? The government mandating that you get a private service? <laughs> fascism. Not overt. Not like, I mean, I mean, technically it's overt, but not like the end all be all. I had a conversation with an Antifa guy and he was like, you can't be a socialist. Socialism is just like, you know, a, a system of economics. And then I was like, right, just like you can't be a capitalist because capitalism is a system and individuals are different. And he was like, well, no, wait a minute. This is a guy who was in Berkeley. And I was like, yes, you can be a socialist. You can be in a, you can be a capitalist. You can be an authoritarian. You can be a libertarian. You can be all of these things and adherence to these ideologies or these principles or lack thereof. They don't seem to get it, do they? These people are literally the fascists. And the problem is the people who oppose fascism tend, tend to be anti collectivist. Collectivists tend to be tend to uh, be more likely fascist because they're the ones who are going to say, I will do whatever the collective tells me to do. So when the government comes out and says everyone must do this, they go, OK, seatbelt laws. I don't like the idea of seatbelt laws. Oh, no. Oh, geez, I said it. The, look, people have a right to choose to take the risks they want to take. When it comes to auto insurance, for instance, this one I actually understand a bit more. The problem is it's the government mandating you get a private service. That's where I draw the line. The thing about liability insurance is that if you're going to drive your car, it's it's a privilege, not a right. And if you crash into somebody and you can't can't afford to cover the costs, like that's screwed up. And liability insurance often doesn't even cover all of the costs. So what do we do? Well, I suppose if you want to drive your car, you're assuming the risks of getting into an accident if someone else hits you, and it can happen. That's just life. So you take a look at all these areas of our lives where the government has been mandating private services, and that's a problem. This is a big argument against Obamacare. They say the government forcing you to buy health insurance is, is authoritarianism, and it is. You know, I'm a big fan of the idea of, of uh, universal basic health care, but maybe what we need is a voucher system for it. I, I really like the idea of a voucher system. Here, voucher system. Here's how it would work. If you got sick, you had a certain amount of, of basic coverage or, or vouchers that covered a certain amount of costs, and, and they would cover a substantive amount. And then you choose which hospital you want to go to, and you give them the voucher, and the voucher is redeemed to the government for cash. They, there, there's a lot of proposals about the voucher system for schools. That way, everybody pays in, rich people pay more in taxes, everybody receives an equal voucher, and then you choose what school to go to, which creates a more uh, competitive system. So the bad schools fail and the good schools do better, and the bad hospitals fail and the good hospitals do better. And if there's a hospital doing better, people are going to be like, I want to go to that one, that's the good hospital. And then the other hospital will be like, we're not getting enough you know, competition, so we need to improve our, our standards and all that stuff. I like that idea. I do. The problem that I see now with universal health care is that you're going to get the government saying, oh, what's that? No, no, no uh, vaccine can't come in here. If California, New York, these other states, Illinois can mandate a vaccine for these things, can mandate the employees get them. Then what happens when you're like, my only option is government health care because Bernie Sanders, you know, abolished private health insurance. And then the and then these public uh, health institutions just say either get the mandatory medical procedure or you can't come in for your other medical procedure. That's a problem. Early on in the pandemic, they were trying to mandate, uh, they, were, they were trying to distribute vaccines by race. And it's right there. I'm like, okay, maybe this doesn't work. But I'll tell you this. Universal basic health care, like you break your arm, you go to the doctor, they'll take care of you. I like the idea. You get the flu, they'll come in, they'll give you Tamiflu or whatever. I like the idea. You have a more serious illness. Well, then you're going to need private supplemental insurance. I think a balance makes sense. That way people aren't dying from things like lack of insulin or whatever. Well, over in LA, they say, for gross, the relief came from knowing he and his coworker, co-owner, don't have to unilaterally unilaterally decide whether to verify their customs are vac- customers are vaccinated. In another part of town, the manager of a struggling nail salon feels trepidation and expects to lose customers. This is going to be hard for us. L.A. is among a growing number of cities in the U.S., including San Francisco and New York, requiring people to show proof of vaccination to enter various types of businesses and venues. But rules in the nation's second most populous city, called Safe Pass L.A., apply to more types of businesses and other indoor locations, including museums and convention centers. And I believe this will be struck down as unconstitutional. The fine back in 1905 might actually get overturned along with this. 
What the Daily Wire noted in their lawsuit is that by mandating vaccines, they're now trapped between the Americans with Disabilities Act and the mandate from the federal government. You can't be adhering to both. Either you are telling people to disclose any private and serious disabilities or mental conditions in which they're supposed to be protected from not having to disclose, or you're in violation of the vaccine mandate by not checking people's medical histories. In the end, it's a rock and a hard place. And I think what we'll end up seeing and this is, should be obvious to everybody, Antifa, which means anti-fascist, now that the Democrats are in power, are pro-fascist and are fighting for fascism. They're pro-fa. pro pro pro, pro uh, Yeah, I guess they're pro-fascist. Now, they'll deny it. Of course they would, because they don't want anyone to know because fascist is a negative term. But they are fascist. So let's just break it down very simply for everybody. If a group of people show up and they say like, hey, government mandates are a bad thing, and then you show up and demand that the government mandate tax dollars go to massive private pharmaceutical companies, you are a corporate shill and an authoritarian shill, and you're a fascist. It's just that simple. This is the cult. That's the cult. That's how you know they're a cult. I believe in freedom and individual responsibility. I believe uh, individuals should be allowed to live their lives peacefully and, um, you know, live and let live. I am not an ultra traditionalist. I'm actually fairly progressive, but I'm also libertarian. So I'll tell you this. Anyone who claims that they're on the left, like Cenk Uger of the Young Turks, but then they actively support Democrat politicians, they're lying. They're fascists. The same is true for people who would support Republican leadership. I just don't see that among the, the conservative movement, the right, the libertarians, intellectual dark web types. They rag on Republicans all the time. And if you look at the polls, you'll see that even Republicans hate Republicans. So you have moderates and Republicans saying no to both parties, and you have Democrats cheering on fascism. <laughs> yeah. Modern politics, it's a cult. They live in a cult. I'll leave it there. Good job, Antifa. You are now the anti-fascist fascists. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see y'all then.